I read through Google's 69 page prompt engineering paper for you. So here's a summary in 10 minutes to help you become a prompt engineer as a complete beginner. Now, before we start, this paper is focused on prompting techniques when you use AI models through an API rather than just through a chatbot. So what this means is that if you only use AI chatbots, like going to chatgpt.com, some parts of the paper won't apply, such as the second section on output settings, since you won't have direct control over these settings. However, most of the other sections of the AI paper are useful no matter how you access the model. And if you do work with AI models via API, like using N8N or Make to build automated workflows, you'll be able to get much more out of the model when you have that extra level of control. And lastly, if you do want to join a community with in-depth guides on building real working AI agents and AI apps as a complete beginner, either for yourself, your own business, or for other businesses, then make sure to click the link in the description. Now let's start with the most important question, which is, what exactly is prompt engineering? Google defines prompt engineering as the process of designing high quality prompts that guide LLMs to produce accurate outputs. But to put this more simply, you can think of this as the art and science of writing inputs to get better responses from AI models. You're basically giving really precise instructions to a smart robot. And the key for prompt engineering here is that you don't need to be a technical expert. Anyone can write a prompt. But the better you tailor your words, the more accurate your output will be. By doing this process of testing, tweaking, and experimenting with your prompts, you can really unlock the full potential of AI models like Google Gemini, ChatGPT, and Claude. Now moving on, let's go over everything regarding LLM output settings. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, when you access AI models through an API, you can adjust output settings yourself. But when you're using something like ChatGPT Online, these options are already set for you behind the scenes, so you can't actually change these. So everything in this section specifically will be using LLMs through an API rather than just a chatbot. Let's now go over the three key settings that you can configure yourself for LLM outputs. The first is output length and this just determines how long the response from the AI model should be. So the longer you set the output length, the more detail you can get inside your output. But with this, it'll also have higher cost and longer processing times. The next key setting is temperature and this controls the randomness of LLMs. So basically, if you set the temperature low like 0.1 or 0.2, you'll get predictable results results each time you run the same exact prompt. This is because AI chooses the most probable words, which creates consistent outputs. But if you do set it higher, you will get more creative answers since there is more randomness in the word selection. Now our last key setting is top P and top K sampling, which refines the outputs even more. These are just fancy names for ways we can limit which words the AI can choose from when generating an answer. So with this, you can fine tune the AI to be as precise or as imaginative as you need. Now that we know how to control the AI's output, let's now cover the different prompting techniques. First, we have zero shot prompt and this is where we give a description of a task without any examples. It's kind of like asking what is the capital of France and expecting a direct answer. Here's an example of zero shot prompting with everything we've learned. So our prompt is just to read through movie reviews and say if the sentiment is positive, negative, or neutral. And we have a low temperature for more predictable outputs, so that if we do run this prompt again, it will probably almost always say positive as the output. And because our output is very short, it either says positive, negative, or neutral, we only set the token limit to 5. Now these zero shot prompts are great for simple outputs like the one I just showed. But when you do want more complex outputs that require examples, you would use either one shot or few shot prompting. With one shot prompts, you provide a single example along with your instructions. This helps the AI see a sample before it answers. Now moving on, few shot prompting is similar to one shot prompting but with even more examples. With these examples, the AI can then understand the pattern that you're aiming for. Now an important note here when you're doing one shot and few shot prompting is that you need to use examples that are relevant. The examples should be high quality and well written and if you have multiple examples, they should all be diverse. Even one small mistake when writing examples can confuse the model and result in an inaccurate output. Now moving on to our next section, when you're working working with LLMs via API, you also have the ability to set more specific system, contextual, and role prompting. These are prompting techniques that still guide how LLMs generate text, but they focus on different aspects. System prompting sets the overall context and purpose of what the AI model should be doing. Think of this like setting the big picture goal from the start for the AI model to follow. These system prompts basically set the fundamental capabilities of the AI model and its overall purpose. Now moving on, contextual prompting is basically adding background information or context 
text to the model. You can add details to your request so that the AI model understands exactly what you're asking. If you ask for a summary of an article, you can provide context to an AI model to focus on the important parts. This is different from system prompting since it's more task specific. So you can think of system prompting as the overall goal or fundamental capabilities of the AI model. Contextual prompting, on the other hand, is more specific to the task or input that you're feeding to the AI model. Now let's go over role prompting, which allows the AI model to adopt a specific personality or style. So for example, you can say, act like a friendly travel guide or explain this like a teacher. This allows the AI to provide an output in a way that matches your role. Now that we understand the basics, let's now go over advanced prompting techniques that can help the AI think even deeper. First, we have step back prompting. This is a two-step approach where you first ask a broad general question to the AI. This allows the AI to tap into its overall knowledge and reasoning. Then you use that general knowledge as context to tackle a more specific problem. This is what helps the AI come up with better answers, and you can think of this like solving a puzzle. Instead of jumping straight to the answer, you first take a step back and look at the whole picture to get general ideas. After this, you then focus on the details. Next, we have chain of thought prompting. This is where you explicitly tell the model to think out loud by explaining its reasoning step by step before coming to a final answer. It's basically like showing every step when you're solving a math problem. And by having the AI show its work, it's much easier to process the output and spot any errors. But just remember that this does result in more tokens, meaning higher cost and higher processing times. After this, we have self-consistency, and this basically takes chain of thought prompting one step further. So instead of prompting just once, you ask the AI model the same question multiple times, typically with a higher temperature to promote variety in the outputs. You then pick the answer that shows up most frequently. This can help you generate more consistent answers and also catch errors by comparing different attempts. Now following this, we have tree of thought, which you can think of as the final evolution of chain of thought prompting. So rather than following one straight line of thinking, the AI branches out and considers several possible answers at once and then chooses the strongest one. So basically the AI brainstorms answers at the same time and then picks the best one available. This is helpful for complex tasks where there are many different routes to a solution. Then we have reason and act prompting, also known as react. Like the name suggests, it combines reasoning and action. Here's how it works. The AI will first reason about a problem and then come up with a plan of what to do next. It then takes action, like searching the web to get more information, and then it uses that new information to improve the answer. This is basically how humans operate in the real world since we reason verbally and then we take action to get new information. Now lastly, we have automatic prompt engineering and multimodal prompting. Automatic prompt engineering is simple. It's just when you have the AI help create its own prompts. So it's basically writing instructions to its Itself. And multimodal prompting just means that you can mix text with images, audio, and even code snippets to give more context. The AI model will then blend all of your text and other inputs as information to come up with the best answer possible. This is especially helpful when your task involves different kind of data or visual information. Now for our last and most important section, I'll go over best practices for beginner prompt engineers by combining everything we learned earlier. The first best practice is to always keep it simple. So the clearer and more straightforward your instructions, the better your results. What this means is to not use complex language and don't provide unnecessary information. And remember, if your prompt is confusing to you, it'll also be confusing to the AI model. Now, the second best practice is to provide examples. Whenever possible, you want to show the AI what you expect by giving examples through one shot or few shot prompting. This will really help the AI understand your goal. Next, you'll want to be specific about the output. You want to tell the AI exactly what format you'd like, whether it's a short answer, paragraph, or a data format like JSON. Next, you'll want to use positive instructions over constraints. What this means is that you want to provide explicit instructions on format, style, and content, driving the AI to a desired output. But what you don't want to do is constrain the model and set limitations on its response. Current AI research shows that positive instructions are more effective than restricting the model through constraints, which makes sense since as humans, we prefer positive instructions rather than a list of what not to do. Next, you'll always want to control the max token length. To keep your output concise and cost effective, set a max token limit to prevent overly long responses or off-topic responses. You can think of this like setting word counts on essays. Next, it's important to experiment and don't be afraid to try different variations. The way you phrase your prompt can affect the output, like whether you ask a question, say a statement, or just simply give a command to the AI model. And by even just changing one word or tweaking your temperature settings, your results can drastically change. You'll also want to adjust these prompts as AI models continually get updated with new features and capabilities. You should also experiment with different output formats. So if you needed data, using JSON or XML 
smell can reduce hallucination significantly. And finally, it's important to learn and iterate. Prompt engineering is a process and you'll typically need to test out a few different prompts before finding the perfect one. It's important to always document prompt variations, models, settings, and your own observations to see what works best for you to really refine your prompts in the future. There's no one perfect prompt, so keep experimenting, document your findings, and adjusting your techniques as you learn. Over time, you'll develop a feel for what works best with your specific tasks and models. By using all these tips, even a complete beginner can become a proficient prompt engineer that can guide AI to get precise answers. Now, if you enjoyed this video and learned something helpful, I would greatly appreciate for you to like, comment, and subscribe as I put out weekly videos on how to best utilize AI either for your own workflows or for businesses. And like I mentioned in the beginning of my video, if you are interested in an AI building community where I cover how to build real working AI agents and AI apps as a complete beginner, then make sure to click the link in bio.